Welcome to the event. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Rusty Zufall, the president of the uh, Penn State Vegetarian Club. Many of you know me, and many of you know about the club, but for those of you who don't, what we do is try to promote awareness to issues related to vegetarianism, focusing primarily on the three most common reasons people choose to be vegetarian or vegan, health, the environment, and the treatment of animals. In addition to bringing out speakers like Bruce Friedrich and Peter Singer, who were here last semester, and now Gene Bauer, we do leafleting, cabling, social events like vegan potlucks, and host movie screenings of films like the documentary Earthlings, which we plan to show next month. So if you would like to receive information and updates about events like these, you can sign up for our mailing list, and feel free to take any vegetarian pamphlets and literature that we provide on your way out. After Mr. Bauer's talk, he will be taking questions from the audience, so keep that in mind as you listen. Gene Bauer is the president and co-founder of Farm Sanctuary, which is America's leading animal protection organization. He holds a bachelor's degree in sociology from California State University in Northridge, and a master's degree in agriculture, agricultural economics from Cornell University. He has conducted hundreds of visits to farms, stockyards and slaughterhouses to document conditions. His pictures and videotape exposing factory farming cruelty have been aired nationally and internationally, educating millions. Gene has testified in court and before local, state, and, le and federal legislative bodies and has initiated groundbreaking legal en enforcement and legislative action to prevent farm animal abuse. He played an important role in passing the first U.S. laws to prohibit cruel farming methods, including the Florida ban on gestation crates, the Arizona ban on veal and gestation crates, the California ban on veal and gestation crates, as well as battery cages, and also the California ban on foie gras. His efforts have been covered by leading news organizations, including the New York Times, the LA Times, the Chicago Tribune, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, NPR, ABC, NBC, CBS, and CNN. His book, entitled Farm Sanctuary, Changing Hearts and Minds About Animals and Food, was published in March of 2008 and has appeared in the LA Times and Boston Globe bestseller list. After Jim's talk, copies of his book will be available for sale and signing over here. Having Gene speak at Penn State is a special treat for us in the Vegetarian Club because we make a trip up to Farm Sanctuary in Watkins Glen, New York uh, to volunteer every semester. And this semester we will be volunteering in April. Lastly, I want to thank Clara Holzner for all her help organizing this event. And now please help me welcome Gene Bauer. Great, thank you very much, Rusty, and uh, thank you all for coming here this evening. Uh, it's great to, say, to see so many of you interested in learning about factory farming and animal issues. Um, you know, I, uh, when I started doing this work, I didn't know a whole lot about what happens to animals on farms, but I've learned a lot over the past 20 years, and I really believe that if more people knew what was happening, we would see a revolution in food buying habits. Uh, right now, most of us are eating in a way that is horrible to animals, but it's also bad for ourselves, it's bad for the environment, and when we look at it rationally, it makes no sense. So I'll be talking about a lot of those things. Um, but I'll start with you know, what we do at Farm Sanctuary. We're a sanctuary for farm animals. And these are animals who have been rescued from various abuse situations. Some we have literally found in trash cans, some we have found thrown on piles of dead animals. And once they come to Farm Sanctuary, they're allowed to live out their lives. And they're allowed to be who they are, which is very different than what you see on factory farms. Uh, but these animals, like cats or like dogs, are individuals, they have personalities, and they enjoy the company of people who are nice to them. Unfortunately, before they came to Farm Sanctuary, there weren't too many people that were very nice to them. You know, they were usually seen as commodities, as production units, not as living, feeling animals. And that is a key part of the message, is that these are living, feeling animals. And we believe they deserve to be treated with respect and to be who they are and to enjoy life. Cows should be allowed to graze. You know, pigs like to root out in the soil. 
Got a couple guys coming in here, and you see the dirt on their noses. They've been out playing in the, in the, in the mud. And pigs have very sensitive noses, uh, and they love to explore the environment. Uh, and it's well known that they have such good noses, they can smell truffles several feet under the soil, and they're, in France, they dig them up. And when you think about how sensitive their noses are, uh, make, putting that in these factory farms is even that much more upsetting because they live day in and day out breathing noxious fumes from their feces because they're packed in these factory farms on slatted floors where urine and feces collects under them and it emits these noxious fumes. So the, these animals with these sensitive noses have to breathe out 24 hours a day. But once they come to farm sanctuary, they get to play in the, in the fields and be who they are to express their normal behaviors. And pigs love to root in the mud. They're very earthy animals. And they're finally able to touch ground uh, at farm sanctuary, whereas in factory farms, they never see the sunlight, they never feel the earth, they never get to root. And after animals are with us for a while, they begin to play. When they first come in, they're often very frightened because all they have known is cruelty at human hands. But once they're treated with kindness, they respond, just like anybody. You know, a child who's only known abuse is going to be very frightened when they meet new people. The animals are very similar. But once they learn to trust us and know they're in a safe place, their true spirits and their personalities really start to shine. And in addition to playing, they show friendship. We had one turkey called Lydia. We used to call her Lydia the hugging turkey because when you would go out to the barnyard, she would actually come up to you and crane her neck around your neck and give you a hug. So again, these are animals that are individuals. They have feelings. They recognize people who have been nice to them. They develop relationships with individuals, both humans and other animals. But as I said, I didn't grow up on a farm. I actually grew up in Hollywood, California. Um, my primary experience with farm animals as I was growing up was at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I grew up eating meat, like everybody around me, like my parents and, and so on. In fact, when I was a kid, I grew up in Hollywood, my mother got me and my brothers and sisters into the Screen Children's Guild, and I actually did commercials for McDonald's when I was, when I was really young. So, I didn't really think very much about what I was eating or what I was doing, uh, despite the fact that I did love animals. That's me with my cat, Tiger. But I didn't think very much about the farm animals, which is, I think, a common experience. Most children especially, but, but people generally, say they care about animals. They oppose animal cruelty. But most people, unfortunately, are unwittingly supporting abuse by the way we eat. But our cheap food, comes with some serious costs. The animal cruelty, the human health hazards, and the environmental problems. Oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> I guess that works. I guess so, does that work for everybody? We can see things a little bit more clearly. Yeah, thank you. So what we eat has serious consequences. This is a slide from a book called The China Study, and for anybody who's interested in the science behind our nutrition, and specifically plant-based eating, I encourage you to get it. It's a book by Colin Campbell, who's a nutritional biochemist at Cornell University, and he conducted the largest study ever to look at human health and nutrition. And what he concluded was that the human species is basically a vegetarian species, and that the more plant foods we eat, the healthier we are, the more animal foods we eat, the sicker we are. But this is a slide from his, um, his book, and it just shows that healthcare costs in the US are very high compared with other countries. So agribusiness in, in our country talks about how cheap our food is and how we're very lucky to only spend 10 cents on every dollar uh, for food. What they neglect to recognize is we spend like 20 cents for every dollar on healthcare. So our cheap food does come with a cost. And the cost spent on healthcare in the US continues to increase um, I hit that by accident a little quicker. And you see, again, this is from the China study. It's a couple years old now, but the trend is unfortunately continuing, but we're continuing to spend more on healthcare and less on food. But there's a correlation there, I would argue. There's an, uh, a report that was put out by the United Nations a couple years ago called Livestock's Long Shadow. And here's a couple of the conclusions from the United Nations report. 